Welcome into my channel, everybody. My name is Soji Sakata, and today we have yet another epic Rap Battles of History reaction. This one is Thanos versus Oppenheimer. So, for those of you who don't know me, I am a gender fluid cat cybernetic VTuber. Uh, if you didn't catch that, I you know you can see more by checking out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Soji Sakata. Um, I stream pretty much weekly. I have been off for a few days. If you can't hear it in my voice, I am just getting over being sick. So if I have to cough, sneeze, whatever, I apologize. I, I'm better, but I'm not 100% yet. So, um, but while you're checking out my Twitch, hit up my uh, TikTok and my Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it as well. Uh, on TikTok, you find me at Soji Sakata and on Twitter at Soji Sakata TTV. Um, and since you're already here on this channel, hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. It really helps out. You don't even have to turn the notifications on. Oh, and it's free, so don't worry. You don't even have to worry about paying. Just no memberships, nothing. Just hit the subscribe. Help help a uh, cat out here, please. So, um, with that being said, though, let's get into it. Thanos versus Oppenheimer. Um, I do remember this battle. I have seen them all. And I remember that uh, Thanos catches all the smoke, so I don't remember exactly how much, though. So let's see how bad Thanos gets whooped. Thanos Oppenheimer. Let's go! I love that. First off, I don't know how they do it. Epic rap battles of history. I think they have magic with their costumes, their makeup, their hair department, whatever. They are magicians, I swear. Lloyd and Pete are chame are chameleons. I don't know how they blend. Like this is one of the few where you can actually see it's like it's very obviously Pete, but even still <coughs> at first glance he looks like an older man who's been haunted by his past. They are very good at what they do. And then you have what's left of the California Raisins in retirement. Now, this is one example where th their costuming department maybe wasn't so good. This is one of the few times they actually got it wrong. Like, you can tell this is just like I will say, it, it's a good cosplay, but it's you can just tell it's off. I don't know what happened there. Somebody goofed. Not their best. But the Infinity Gauntlet, I'll give them that. That's good. The Infinity Gauntlet they did well on. I am inevitable, immeasurable, inexorable, monstrous, with bars weighing on you harder than your haunting guilty conscious. I am Thanos, and I crush tracks like Tesseracts in my paw. All right, let's stop it there for a second. Already coming out, I am inevitable. The line from the movie, of course. Gotta start out with a good Thanos quote. Also, I don't, everybody hates on his voice. I think Lloyd did a good job with the voice on this one. The costumes, eh, they goofed, but the, the actual voice I thought was pretty good. Um, But I, I am inev... <coughs> Excuse me, too much talking tonight. I am inevitable, inexorable, which I think means you can't get rid of him. Which, of course, he is a immortal of the Marvel world. Um, so that is actually a pretty good thing. He, yeah, he really can't get rid of him. Uh, monstrous. Yeah, he is like six feet. Or no, six feet. The average human's like five, six foot tall. He, they're like nine or ten. These people are tall. So yeah, he is not only monstrous with his, ac with his actions, but also with just he is a monster of a person. Like, he's huge. So that's a really good, uh, like, flex on himself there. Um, and then with bars weighing on you harder than your haunting, guilty conscience. Uh, yeah, uh, Oppenheimer never did feel good about what he did there, so actually a pretty good diss on Oppenheimer there, because, yeah, if his bars are going to weigh that heavy, uh, as heavy as what Oppenheimer's past has done to him, that's going to hurt. Oppenheimer did not feel good about it. And then, of course, I am Thanos, and I crush tracks like Tesseracts in my palm. Uh, yeah, because he did kind of just take the Tesseract, the container for an Infinity Stone, 
and basically just crushed it in his palm to gain the stone. So, um, yeah, if you can, the Tesseracts are not easy to crack, and he just basically cracked it. So that's a good flex on himself, too. And yeah, if he crushes this track that hard, that's going to be a pretty good track. Um, spoiler alert, he doesn't. You're a pencil pushing terror and <coughs> love his ball. Seems you started off. <laughs> okay, that's good too. You're a pencil pushing Terran. Basically, you're a nerdy little human. Meanwhile, I'm an immortal. And they even there's the size difference I'm talking about. So he's like, yeah, I'm an eternal. I'm not an eternal, an immortal. And yeah, if if you're an immortal, uh, and he, there are two variants of the. Uh, immortals in the Marvel universe that I'm aware of. There are the Eternals and the Deviants. Eternals, of course, I uh, think traditional like Greek god and goddess. Very beautiful, very well portrayed. And then you have the Deviant. Now, if you know anything about the word of Deviant, or God forbid the uh, art website that shares a name with that, um, then you know that things get a little weird on that side of the fence. So that's when you end up with Giant California Raisin Baby. I think I've heard somebody else reference him as that before, but um, I thought it was very funny, and I'm going to keep on that, because I, he, he does look... If you've never seen the California Raisins... They were a music group back in the day, and they looked like this. These are the California Raisins. So if you were wondering what the reference was, um, yeah... Thanos, California Raisin. Now you get why the joke is funny. But if you, if you don't know anything about Red Skelton, um, if you have to explain it, it ain't funny. Um, that is a comedian from way back when that probably the internet has maybe even forgot about at this point. Uh, I am not that old, but I am showing my mental age. And of course, who never learned to love his bomb? So yeah, uh, Thanos' mom actually tried to kill him. And uh, <laughs> despite that, he even Thanos is dissing on Oppenheimer because, you know, you, you never even got a chance to love your bomb. So it's like, that's a good twist on it. Of course, uh, Oppenheimer's kind of the father of the atomic bomb. So I think it might be trying to, like, call him a, you know, like, I think that might be a flip on, like, yeah, your father. Talk about more like a mother. and You never even got to love your bomb. Like, that's a good, like twist flip kind of thing. I like the I like where it's going. To love is ball. Seems you started off a chemist and on your world you were a prodigy. Well that makes sense. Such a rhymes are only hot periodically. Okay, yep. Chemist periodically. That uh, that's a good play on the periodic table. Of course, the elements are uh what you need to know and learn about to be able to split atoms, create nuclear fission and fusion. Um, so that's a that's a really good diss right there. I like that. And uh, all right, let's go back a little here. I've, whoops, yep. World, we you were a prodigy. Well, that makes sense. Such a rhymes are only hot periodically. Man, I burned the Avengers down to embers, sent half your planet to be slaughtered, and now I'm off in Oppenheimer like I did to my daughter. Got a physical. Ah, uh, yeah, that's. Maybe not your best moment to flex on, but at the same point, it is Thanos. So yeah, Thanos kind of killed his own daughter. Not not a great look for him, but hey, when you're a power crazed uh, or a a crazy power hungry madman, um, whose only goal is to basically impress the embodiment of death, yeah, you pretty much do anything for her because you're a psychopath. So yeah, for him that's a flex. To anybody else, that's just not a great thing. Uh, but yeah, he did, uh, he did beat the Avengers at one point in time. Not a, in the end he lost, but he did actually, uh, give it, he was, he's probably the Avengers biggest fight. So that's a good flex. Uh, sent half the planet to be slaughtered. Yeah. The snap did that as well. And, uh, yeah, if he's off in Oppenheimer, like he did to his daughter, that's also a pretty good flex. Whoops. Probably the best bar Thanos has. Dr. Manhattan, of course, the Manhattan Project. But there's also, I believe, a superhero named Dr. Manhattan. So, 
Um, and I don't think he was very popular. Uh, it tells you a lot. I know of most of the mainline superheroes, and I think Dr. Manhattan was a... I'm going to look this one up, too. Whoops. Dr. Manhattan. There it is. Yes, fictional character. I thought so. Oh, he's DC Comics. What? Weird. I did not expect a DC reference. I thought that was a Marvel reference. Oh, DC Universe Watchmen. Okay, but yeah, so Dr. Manhattan, of course, not. I had to look him up to know who he was. So yeah, that's a pretty good diss saying you're Dr. Manhattan playing on the Manhattan Project with the atomic bomb. Uh, and just saying he has a tiny PP, of course, that's always a pretty good diss. Um, and yeah, he's got a fist of gold when he's rapping, and the six Infinity Gems that he's packing, of course, talking about the Infinity Gauntlet. That's just a good kind of flex in general. It's kind of like rappers singing about their chains and stuff that they're able to afford. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I mean, hey, it's when you're rapping and trying to flex, you throw everything you got at the wall, see what sticks. Hadron smashing all your atoms, best not collide with the ah. rhyming, cause you break and bleed so easy, I think I'll call you off and hide and both the funniest and grossest part in this entire battle. Uh, the, I do like the Hadron smashing all your atoms. Best not collide with me when I'm rhyming. Of course, if you're familiar with physics, the Hadron Collider is what they use to smash particles together at light speed uh, to see what happens. It's kind of a very interesting science-y thing. Uh, if, you've ever in if you're interested, look up Hadron Collider. Some interesting stuff. I actually want to do more research on it, but I haven't had a lot of time. Probably because I'm reacting to rap battles. <laughs> um, <coughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, because uh, best not collide with me when I'm rhyming, because you break and bleed so easy, which you would do in a collision, um, that he's going to call you up in hymen. Um, yeah, if you've been through sex ed, you know what the hymen is. If you've not been through sex ed, I'm not spelling it for you. Don't Google it and learn it when you get older. If you're that young, why are you on this channel? Go back to kids YouTube until you're older. Um, yeah, that's just honestly kind of gross. But I mean, hey, again, battle rap. There's no rules. Throw it at the wall. See what sticks. Actually, you know, no, maybe don't throw that at the wall. Just, yeah, yikes. Yeah. With me when I'm rhyming, cause oh. you break and bleed so easy. I think I'll call you up and hide. It's impossible to Tommy Yabi. You just don't have the stones. Just don't have the stones. You don't you got no nuts, you got no balls, you're not a man. I, I, yeah, that's pretty elementary. And lady, the only thing you're good at wrecking is a home. Cause you slept with your friend's wife. Right there in your friend's bed. Then got another married girl pregnant. You should have gone for the head. I love the finish. Ironic talking about a bar about head. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, uh, you don't have the stones because the only thing you're good at wrecking is a home. Uh, yeah, that's uh, true. Oppenheimer definitely, uh, you know, slept with your friend's wife right there in his friend's... Uh, right there in his wife's... Uh, yeah, right there in his friend's wife's bed. And then, uh, yeah, got another married girl pregnant. So... Oppenheimer was not shy about getting around, and that's, yeah, not a good look. And then, of course, Thanos tying it in with his uh, famous line from the movie, you should have gone for the head, of course, uh, doubling for the fellatio there. I do love, love, love that bar. That's probably the best and most clever we'll, we will hear Thanos for the rest of this battle. And now we get to listen in on the awesome audio that comes from Oppenheimer. I love the audio effect. Listening to you took everything I have left. After your raps, I am become deaf. Oppenheimer's most famous quote, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. But uh, he's so perturbed by Thanos' rapping that he hasn't become death. He's become deaf from listening to him. That hurts. You need an Iron Man for that wrinkly ass skin and that butt, 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 chin. Here we go now. God, I love that flow. You need an iron man, of course. You need an iron, like an iron for an ironing board to get wrinkles out of his wrinkly skin. Also the double for Iron Man, Tony Stark. 
And of all, of course, also all the wrinkles on his chin, which looks like a butt, 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 butt from all the different cracks in it. Oh, that's the best one. And then I love he just pops up. Here we go now. <laughs> There's so much energy behind such a stoic performance. Like, Pete barely moves. He barely rocks around. He's not up there trying to be all big MC like it's a battle rap. Because he is still, like, playing the character of somebody who is very haunted. And, like, seen things. But he's still got a rap with some flow. So it's it's funny how it comes off a rapper who's, like, already seen so much that he doesn't even care. He's just here to do the job. But still wants to do a good job. It's such a paradox. I love it. Where's your rhythm? I thought you had the time stone. Your punchlines sound like they came from Rhyme Zone. You might be something in the <laughs> NCU, but between us, who's the worst MCU? I... Already, Thanos is getting killed. Oh my god, the, the bars here. Where's your rhythm? I thought you had the time stone. Yeah, you would think that somebody with the time stone would have a good rhythm with their bars. But already, the flow from Oppenheimer is way better. And then, um... Your punchlines sound like they came from Rhyme Zone. You'd, I will say, Rhyme Zone, on an occasion, I will look it up just to see, like, give me ideas for other words that I can rhyme to, like, get me started on the creative path. But I try not to use it to actually just, like, find a rhyme, find a rhyme, find a rhyme. Give me ideas, give me inspiration, but don't copy straight from it. That's, uh, yeah, no, you don't want to be the guy who uses Rhyme Zone all the time. Big yikes. Uh, and then, uh, that came from Rhyme Zone. You might be something, yeah, that's it. You might be something in the MCU, of course, Marvel Cinematic Universe, which Thanos is very much a big part of. So, yeah, you might be something in the MCU, but between us, who's the worst MC? You. MC, of course, rap slang for the Master of Ceremonies. The uh, man on the mic, so to speak, the rapper at the on the on the track. So yeah, if he's uh, if he's something in the MCU, but yeah, if it's talking Oppenheimer and Thanos, Thanos is the worst MC here. So that's a really good hit. I like that. Lines sound like they came from Rhyme Zone. You might be something in the MCU, but between us, who's the worst MCU? You. Your dialogue's got too many breaks in the syllable. You talk so slow, drags things you're invisible. I cause chain reactions when I'm lyrical, cause I've got that fissile material. Oh, such a good. That's so good. I love that. You talk so slow. Your dialogue's got too many breaks in the syllables. Of course, Thanos is very slow and drawn out. Very much reminds me of Obama, of all people, talking. He's got those awkward, odd pauses. It's good for holding your attention, but yeah, if you're Drax, uh, you think he's invisible because he talks so slow. So that's a good diss there. And then I got, I cause chain reactions when I'm lyrical because I've got that fissile material. Of course, fissile material is the stuff inside of a nuclear bomb. So yeah, if, uh, if his lyrics are causing chain reactions and he's the father of the atomic bomb... He's about to set off a nuke on this track, and that's way bigger than anything Thanos claimed. I love that line. You were born to Eternals. Oh, yep, there. Born to Eternals. That's what I was talking about earlier. Eternals versus Deviants. But came on looking so scary that your own mother tried to make you a temporary. Yes. That, that's what I was talking about earlier, too. Yes, yes. She, she did try to off Thanos the second he was born. That's who said it. It was Boomstick. California Raisin Baby. From Death Battle. That's what it was. I knew I heard somebody reference it. The old memory box. It's a little cloudy from the sickness, but it's coming back to me slowly. Meanwhile, I've mastered the atom more than any man alive. Now I'm here to split you like two and three from five. Now, pay attention to the way that's spelled. Two, three, five, uranium. Well, you. You... R-A-N-I-U-M. I do believe Uranium-235. Yes. Uh, it is... Uh, its atomic number is 92. What is 235 specifically? An isotope of Uranium. That's what it is. Yep. And it is the uh, main... Uh, oh, U-3... Redirects here. I guess there's a German submarine called a U-235. 
But yes, fission properties. This is what makes the atomic bomb work. Uranium-235 in specific. That is the... So yeah, if you split 2 and 3 from 5, what you end up with is nuclear fission, which is how the atomic bomb works. So that's a really clever thing. Because if he's going to split you apart, but he's going to split it like 2 and 3 from 5 in uranium... And again, drop a nuke on you. He's the father of the atomic bomb. Such a good line. I love it. And he, he, and of course, if he's capable of doing that, he has mastered the atom more than any man alive. And that was true. He did. Such a good bar. I love that one. I'm a peaceful man, but I do what I must. You had an evil plan, Thanos, and it left you in the dust. Yeah, I left you in the dust, and he turns to dust like the movies. I never caught that visual gaff or gag before. That's great, but yeah, uh, Thanos or Oppenheimer was in by nature kind of a passive guy. He didn't want to use this to hurt people, but he did it because it was a necessity at the time, or at least it was seen as such. It was kind of a necessity for him to do it. And then yeah, Thanos did have an evil plan, and it kind of did leave him in the dust there. That hurts. It must leave you enraged when you compare our talents, because in this battle, there is no balance. Ain't that the truth? That is, of course, what Thanos was seeking to uh, achieve with the snap, was balance. And, uh, yeah, there, there's no balance here. Uh, yeah, they, the scale is tipped heavily towards Oppenheimer. Uh, well, Thanos is catching all the smoke. Alright, sorry about that, I needed a drink. Too much talking, I'm gonna cough if I don't. <laughs> For a communist pariah, you come off as awfully cocky, but I'll make you bend the knee and round two like Nagasaki. Oh. The... Communist pariah. I'm not sure what uh, Oppenheimer did to be a communist pariah. I'm not a. I haven't seen the movie, and I'm not a history buff on that. But I'll take Thanos's word for it. There, that's not good. Um, yeah, and, uh, of course, communism, very much the uh, group mentality, so you don't want to be the cocky guy uh, in a communist setting. That's not a good thing to be. And yeah, if he's going to... Thanos, again, making big claims here that he's going to make him bend the knee in round two like Nagasaki. Of course, this is the second verse, and uh, Nagasaki was the second atomic bomb the U.S. dropped on uh, Japan, the first being Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. So yeah, that and that did uh, eventually lead to Japan basically fully surrendering. So yeah, that's uh, that's a good flex there. It's awfully cocky, but I'll make you bend the knee and round two like Nagasaki. I'm the box office topper, the Marvel show stopper. Got my what? name on this bit like it's the Thanos copter. No, just no. Uh uh, yeah. Box office topper, Marvel showstopper. I'll give you that. I'll give them those two. But the Thanos copter? Like, bruh. Uh, no. I mean, yeah, your name's on it, I guess. That I get the I get the joke, but that's cheesy as hell. Uh uh. No. That ain't it, Chief. You just got no answer. For Fortnite's dopest dancer. I will yeah, also not a flex. And Peter Griffin is in Fortnite. Who else is in Fortnite now? Yeah, you could play at one point in time, you could play as Thanos. And I will say the gameplay, I did get to play it. When you got the Infinity Gauntlet, it was fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, playing as him, but being in Fortnite is not so much of a flex as it just means you're part of pop culture. I mean, even in Fortnite... He can't claim to be the best rapper because Marshall Mathers himself, Slim Shady, Eminem, is now in Fortnite. So he's not even the best rapper there. Like, get, yeah, if, if dancing's the best you got in Fortnite, a game about eliminating people, which is what you tried to do, yeah, that ain't a good look, boss. Nose copter. He's got no answer for Fortnite's dopest dancer. I will low key choke you out like my name was Throat Cancer. Now that's a good bar, though. Of course, low key, like on the low, on low key, 
but Loki as in Thor, Odin, and Loki from the Marvel movies and Norse mythology. Loki, uh, of course, being part of the MCU, that's a great double on his name. Uh, and yeah, that, that uh, if that's what happened to Oppenheimer, he died of throat cancer. So, of course, weirdly, the a very similar death to, of all people, Sigmund Freud, who died of mouth cancer. It's kind of a strange one there. A lot of famous names in history uh, that have been on the side of, or at least tried to be on the side of science, have died from cancer. Uh, I, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing there. You want to talk about death? How about the one that looked at you and swiped left? Ow. Already, Oppenheimer claps back right with a below-the-belt crotch shot. Yeah. Remember what I said about Thanos doing everything for the physical embodiment of death? I think I mentioned that already. If I didn't, the entire reason for everything Thanos does is to impress the physical embodiment of death. Uh, yeah, and didn't really work because death has a thing for, of all people, Deadpool. I don't exp I, I can't explain it. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a whole thing there between Deadpool, death, and Thanos to the point where Thanos actually cursed Deadpool with not being able to die so he couldn't be with death because Thanos wanted her. Long story. But yeah, uh, death ends up basically turning down Thanos. So yeah, if this was Tinder, she'd have swiped left. Big oof. Was throat cancer. You want to talk about death? How about the one that looked at you and swiped left? I'm the destroyer of worlds. You got your nuts handed to you by a squirrel girl. Yep, his nickname was the destroyer of worlds. Um, and yeah, Thanos did kind of get his butt handed to him by squirrel girl. Again, not the way you want to go out. We're in the end game now, Tinky Winky. Oh. Avengers End Game, and then Tinky Winky, the purple Teletubby. Yeah, you don't want to be called the purple Teletubby. You don't want to be called a Teletubby in general unless you actually are a Teletubby. Not, not what, no. Uh-uh. Not what you want to be called. Handed to you by a squirrel girl. We're in the end game now, Tinky Winky. A physicist like Ant-Man. All up in your stinky. Ew. I forgot about that for a while. Yeah, that was a theory. Uh, it was found to be not true. It wouldn't have worked. But that was the thing, was they're like, why doesn't Ant-Man just go super small up Thanos' butthole and then explode? And it's like, honestly, if I was Paul Rudd, I would have been trying to get people off of that as fast as possible because, ew. No, uh-uh. Yikes. Tinky Winky, a physicist like Ant-Man. All up in your stinky. Anyone who believes that Thanos did nothing wrong crap has obviously never heard you rap. Oh, snap. Okay, yep. So anyone who believes that Thanos did nothing wrong crap, uh, yeah, there is the whole thing that Thanos did nothing wrong, which, I mean, he killed half the world's population. I'm pretty sure there's something there to say he was probably wrong. Uh, yeah, not, not, no, uh-uh. So yeah, uh, yeah, and especially that even if they would think that he didn't have any bad behaviors or actions, yeah, they'll change that once they hear him rapping. So yeah, that's a that's a big W for Oppenheimer in the win column there. Who won? That's not even a question. Oppenheimer takes the cake on this one. Um, did I miss anything? Uh, did I? Do you have something else maybe to add to one of those bars? If so, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I think I've already said it four times now, but Oppenheimer won this by a landslide. So I'm gonna call it a night there and get these uploaded. Thanks for watching, everybody. My name's Soji. I'll be back next week with one more epic rap battle a week from now on. And uh, may even try to throw in a few others while I'm at it. Uh, maybe off the epic rap battles train. So um, I would love to do some reactions to Eminem, to um, my favorite artist uh, out there, Demon Dice, uh, or Demon Dice Karen. My favorite artist of all time. Uh, her music saved my life, and I definitely want to review some of it, um, if not all of it, so I'm going to try to do some of that. Um, I'd love to do some DAX, some Crypt, some, uh, some of the, like the YouTube ciphers. Um, some of those I'm not going to break down, but I do want to listen to them. 
I would love to get to some of the music I love and just share it with uh, everybody who watches. So watch for that coming out here uh, starting next week. Going to try to keep up on the two videos. One ERB now that we're caught up and uh, one that I just want to share with you guys. So with that being said, like I said, my name's Soji. Catch you in the next one. Have a great night. I'm out.